I've been backpacking for most of my life, including three years as a guide, but I still have more to learn. That's why I'm meeting up with my good friend Dan Becker and cinematographer Emmett Hendrickson to go backpacking in the Sawtooth Mountains of Idaho. They each have very different styles and backgrounds, so every time I learn something new. Together, we're hitting the trail in one of the most under-the-radar states. We're testing new gear, summiting mountains, and, generally speaking, being idiots in the mountains. Let's go. Oh no! What happened? This last night. Well, we're already shotgunning beers. It's 9 a.m. It fell out of my bag and I hit a rock and it just oh, started. No. It just burst. <laughs> oh my! That was good. Look what Eric's gonna be taking with on his trip. Yeah, so I've never used this tent before, and I'm trying out the X Mid, the Durston X Mid. Uh, which I'm re completely relying upon Dan to uh, have oh, supplied wait. me there it is. with a good tent that yeah. I will not. He's borrowing it from me. Borrowing? I thought you said I could have it. <laughs> no. It, it, it was like a, a miracle that I even got this tent. Like, yeah. These are unavailable. Well, tent. thanks. A lot of apprehension. Why? I don't know. Because you're backpacking with me? D yes. Uh, so today on the channel, I'm going to be backpacking with Dan Becker. This is going to be the most miserable three days of my life. Um, so stick around and have fun. Let's go do this. Hey. All right, let's go. Yeah. So Dan and I are going back into the Sawtooths for the next three days. And uh, this is gonna be a fun time because we're both very different styles in our backpacking. I've got the big heavy Cadillac backpack filled, filled to the brim. Dan's got like four pounds on his back. Um, and I'm actually also gonna be trying out some new gear. And uh, I've got something special for Dan. Great. Don't worry, it'll be fine. We're gonna have a good time. Right, Dan? Yeah, can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Who doesn't want to be? I would love to be. So, I've got a handful of new things that I'm testing, trying out on this trip. New hiking boots that I'm using, the Aku Rockets. And I've been a huge fan of Aku's shoes in the past. They're actually kind of like a revelation to me. Uh, they're an Italian company that uh, is fairly unknown in the US. But I've been super impressed with some of their pieces. Um, they have this two lace system that I'm actually pretty intrigued with. But it's always a new kind of scary thing trying out new, new pieces of footwear on a backpacking trip. You're never really sure if you're gonna get hot spots or blisters or anything like that. So far, we're about four miles in, feeling good. So. That's a good sign. Steep. A little bit of an exposure behind us and below us. Kind of steep. There's also some pretty gorgeous granite there behind us. Whew. Beautiful place. Uh, just crossed the river. Now we're really close to our camp one for tonight, a gorgeous lake. Looking forward to seeing it, but up here we're just kind of in this bouldery stuff that's kind of gnarly. They're looking cool. Woo! Ooh, sun flares, playing with sun flares. This is kind of gnarly up here. Gnarly, dude. Gnarly. K it's gnarly. Gnarly. Now it's a G, not a K. Uh. That's what elevation will do to you. Yeah, you okay, Dan? That's what good elevation will do to you. <laughs> you need to workshop that one, I think. See what I did there? Yeah. Nature, serenity, water. The world as it could be. The world as it should be. This message is brought to you by Backpacking TV. Well, we've made it to the lake. It is crazy beautiful up here, but this lake is such a gorgeous blue, green, there's trout swimming in there, looks amazing. Beautiful backdrop. So, feeling pretty stoked. We're having fun. So I'm doing something I don't necessarily recommend as a good idea. 
I am testing out a new tent on this backpacking trip. I've never set it up before. And it's a style of tent that I don't typically use. So this is a trekking pole tent. So uh, we're gonna try it out. Dan's probably gonna laugh at me, you know, critique my setup style, but uh, I'm gonna have fun trying out the Durston X-Mid one person tent here. All right, time to set it up. I'm already lost. <laughs> When I show you how to set up, it is literally the easiest tent to set up. Ever. Okay, okay. Where are the corners? <laughs> oh, they're they're like at a point where there's like a 90. Is this how it's supposed to be? So, you. also the other thing you gotta take into consideration is that... <laughs> it's like the first time we've been like truly lost with a tent for a while. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, you're drinking it in, baby. I am, I am drinking in the tears of Eric Hansen. <laughs> I want to show people inside because I think this this is hard to visualize without getting in there. So the thing that makes the Durston X-Mid really unique is its use of geometry. You have the rectangular space that's normal for a tent, and then the inner is actually going diagonally across the longest part of the rectangle. So it really maximizes a lot of the space in a really unique and interesting way. So you think this is like, you've said you've experienced like super high winds? Yeah, and I had. <clears throat> at least 50 mile an hour winds almost for a solid three hours in Texas and right next to me was a semi freestanding tent that tent s literally snapped in half <laughs> and this thing stood strong the entire time wow it was incredible I couldn't believe it look at that thanks Dan for giving me a tent <clears throat> Sorry, what? well it's time to turn in for the night catch you guys tomorrow good night Dan Hi there, Eric. This is a party. <laughs> does it look like a party now? It does look like a party. I want to be over there. Party in my tent. No. Are you filming me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good night, dude. What? It's the the rock. The rock. Woo. That's the way to wake up, right? That's right. Care to step into my bedroom here? <laughs> There's plenty of room. Is that an invitation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although you might want to give it a minute to clear out, <laughs> air out in here. Well, you're so matchy matchy. Look at you. Look at how mat matchy you he is. You know, that's it's like the number one thing I think about when I get gear. He's a he's a he's the ginger headed man <laughs> with the. You just dropped the G word. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Zen Bivy light bed. This is the 10 degree version and the extra wide and extra long. So it's it's, it's huge. And it's, it barely it, fits inside of this it, X -Mid. it barely <laughs> does. But honestly, you it's look like kind you're of, bursting out the seams. It's kind of perfect because I feel like I <laughs> am in like luxury heaven right now. So this is an interesting setup. It is a quilt. So instead of zippers, there's these little clasps that you can do or undo based on how cold you think it might be. Uh, I was expecting it to be in the 20s, uh, so I did it all the way up, and I was so warm last night. I was too warm, basically. The sheer amount of room that you can move around, it feels like you're in a bed at home. Like, it's so much space, and it's so warm. And look at the size of the pillow barn on this one. This is my favorite part. Being able to actually like tuck in and have it. Yeah, your pillow's not going anywhere. You can, you know, you can kind of cozy on up and get that like mummy feel if you want. The coziness of the mummy feel. But you can also, you know, my I kept getting warm. So then I just would drop it get my head on top of it to let my head ventilate some of that heat you can lay like on your full stomach with tons of space which i sleep like that all the time my biggest downfall of the whole system i think is just its bulkiness but this is the 25 wide and 77 long so i think if i did it again i'd get the 20 by 72. but i think you would really like this because there's no zippers to get lost in you can just unclasp things as it feels okay. warm or well, not warm. The plan is I'm going to use that tonight. I was I was christening it all night long. Thank for you. you. I, could, I can still smell that. <laughs> so I'm baking some baked yeah. goods. I'm going to walk away uh, <laughs> over here. <laughs> Ooh. 
You got that jalapeno cheddar biscuits too? Yeah. I mean, it smells good uncooked. <laughs> you can just like eat dry chunks of it and probably still be <laughs> still be good. You might not poop for three days, but yeah. <laughs> Which would be a win out here. Oh, you, we don't want to yeah, poop right no, now. We don't, there's no there's nowhere to poop. poop. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the best breakfast this is ever made for backpacking. Actually incredible. Yeah. So good. That one is hey, my favorite. Not as good as the rest of the guys. He, okay, when we were in Yellowstone on a car camping trip with a, with, a, with a professional chef, professional chef, mind you, cooking real food, he was off to the side still eating pinnacles. <laughs> that is not a lie. Am I telling the truth? So Dan is showing me this new thing. Uh, it's a pour-over coffee for the backcountry, and he's swearing by it. I'm trying it for the first time right here. Yep. So there's a filter on the inside of the bag. So you're, it's literally, this coffee's ready to go. It just pours over into a compartment below it. And then when it's ready, you just pop this little nozzle off here and pour it into your cup. And it's reusable, recyclable. You know, it's, it's all the things, organic. Oh, we might have had a first sip. On a one to ten backcountry coffee, where are you at? Eight point five. Wow. Okay. Honestly, I was, no, I was, honestly, it tastes like real, like a real pour. It's over. a real. Well, it's. Yeah. I did used to work as a barista for three He's, months. He said life. he. Yeah, he said he wasn't a coffee <laughs> snob. <laughs> uh, we are packed up and ready to hit the trail. We are heading off to another uh, lake. This one is truly stunning. Uh, gorgeous blue water. Looks very inviting. I want to go swim, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I will be with the temperatures. Uh, but yeah, we've got another eight or so miles ahead of us today. Uh, get to another lake, do it all again. Here we go. That's what it's about. Must see hills like this in Wisconsin. On to lake number two. Yep. Second half of the adventure. Second half, here we go. Let's do it. Pretty nice light this way. Hey, is this allowed on your channel, first off? Oh, my most popular video is a poop video. So, yes. We're gonna dig a hole. Okay. We're gonna drop trow. Okay. We're gonna let her rip. Yep. We're gonna bury the rip. <laughs> we're gonna pack out the zip. Oh. And then we're gonna hit the trail. Dirty TP. And your PP goes in the ZP. You, you're peeing into the Ziploc? Leave no trace. <laughs> Could you turn the dang camera up? <laughs> <laughs> so we've done kind of like a little W out, up to goat, back, along. Now we're going to a whole other lake. If things go well, we're gonna be up summiting one of the peaks tomorrow morning. Getting Dan a peak. I know he's excited. See that peak right there? That one's where we're gonna go tomorrow. Uh, that's gonna be a big boy. Would this be your first peak you've ever done? Yes. Mm hmm. And uh, you're feeling good. Yeah. I'm feeling so good. Dan, we're gonna get there. We got this. We're gonna do it. We got this. Yep. We got it. Go. All right. And right there behind me, we uh, just took a little polar plunge in this gorgeous alpine lake, making it feel all worth it. So good. So good. So good tonight. Yeah, nice and clean and fresh. It is brisk in there, but it feels so good. Look at where I get to spend the night. Well, that was a far more successful setup of this Durston the second time around than the first time around. And 
in doing it now for two times, it is actually one of the most simple tents I've ever used uh, to set up. The biggest thing is that you just need a decent amount of space to actually drive the stakes in and that's going to be relatively square. Whereas uh, I think with this tent, you can probably not get away with being off and wonky as much because uh, this won't be tensioned properly. Whereas with a freestanding tent with uh, inner tent poles, you could probably kind of squish it around some stuff and or or not really stake out the corners very well. Uh, but the tent poles are still giving it that structure. So uh, all things considered though, I'm super impressed. Now I'm gonna continue the setup and uh, going to make some dinner. Woke up to a sight to behold, special light coming over the lake. The lake is just perfectly flat and still and has been all night long. So this is so cool to see. Just this massive reflection pool. And today, we're gonna go climb one of those guys. So we've just set off from camp. This is day three on the trail. Left most of our gear at camp we are going to summit a peak. Uh, we've got this stunning lake here that we're hiking alongside and our mission today is up to the side of us. This is Dan's first peak experience and uh, he's nervous but we're gonna get him to the top whether he likes it or not. We've got another looks like maybe 800 feet of ascent. Dan's kicking it, kicking ace. We're doing good. Doesn't really look like it from here, but it's like super pointy vertical on the other side. Just about at the top. What's on the other side? Woo! Oh, buddy. There's our ridge line going up to the top of, top of the peak. Dan, you are, you've already done literally all the hard work. You gotta get the actual summit now. What's the actual summit? Right there. I don't like it. There's a path on that side too, but I'm not going over there. Sorry. Oh, geez, we made it. That ain't happening. <laughs> Almost stupid how pretty that is. Big Dan, we Big made Dan. it. We did it. Boom! We are at the top of Alpine Peak. This is your first First peak. ever. Proper uh, peak. And I can't believe I did it. Uh, how do you feel? <laughs> um, I, I have a lot of, I have a range of emotions right now. Okay. Huge. Uh, mostly like, uh, how did I do this? <laughs> but I'm here, so. You, I think you blacked out. I did, I totally yeah. blacked out. Uh, but yeah. You made it. I am I proud did. of you. That was not an easy route up. No. So uh, kudos to you. I realized I had manual focus on, so it's... We're at just shy of 10,000 feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we call this a win. Win. Win, win. Good job, buddy. Boom. Good job, Dan. All right. Peace. You're good. You would do yeah. that, would you? <laughs>
<laughs> of course, this is too cool, man. There you go. Oh, he's got the stand-up slide now. Dan, I've never been more proud of anyone in my life. Oh, I need a sec. Whew. Dan, look at you go. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> See? I'll do it again just for that. Oh. That was good. How are your hands? Good. Yeah? Yep. Whew. <laughs> when you clapped, a lot of dust came off. <laughs> well, my friends, we done did it. That's the trip. Thanks for joining along. Dan Becker did some amazing stuff. We had a lot of fun. Did you have fun? I did. Thanks to this guy. I had a lot of fun. Now it's time to get about eight miles out of here and go eat an absurdly large dinner. <laughs> like twice. That's how hungry I am. That's right. Yeah. That's it. Let's go. All right. Let's do it. See you later, everybody.